today, I'm gonna give you my full review of the Sunto 9 Bob. Let's do this. <laughs> so yeah, that's Sunto 9. What do I think about it? First of all, I want to say who I am as a watch user. As you can see, I'm also a watch tester. I test them all. And what I do as sport, I think it's important to say because if you're not doing the same sport, it is possible that you're not looking for the same thing. I am a hiker. I am a cycler. Cycling, cycling. Yeah, I do cycling, bicycle. I do walking, I do run sometimes, it's not my favorite sport, but I do run sometimes, mostly in trails, um, and those are my main sport. I do some other sports, but those one are the mains, so I'm not swimming or those kind of things, uh, so if you're swimming, well, probably uh, you're not looking for the same thing, so here is my review. The way that it works is that I have a checklist of things that I check on every watch and I do take note while I test the watch. So we're gonna see that point by point. Uh, you can look into the timeline. Everything is chaptered so you can skip to something that interests you if at some point I do talk about something that you don't care at all. So let's go for the first point, which is the build quality and the look. Well, of course, if we take a look at it uh, from front, um, it's not my type of watch. And I have to say, I will compare sometime with Garmin watch because Garmin is my favorite brand of watch. So yeah, I will compare sometime. Um, so if I take a look at this on front, uh, I think it's a beautiful watch. Uh, not my type of watch, but still it's a beautiful watch. Uh, Nicely made, the button on the side, uh, the very thin thin bezel, and I think it's a great looking watch. But when we take a look at the back, uh, I think it's look unfinished. Uh, it's all plasticky, and you see you have those buttons that spread out of the watch, and I think it could have done some. A bit more more work on that i don't like the look of the watch at the back uh if we take a look at the at the band um i think it's great that <laughs> when you buy a watch actually it always come with silicon band and they did go for a nylon band i respect that i like nylon band uh, but i don't really like the quality of that band um, it feels cheap it feels like a cheap nylon band uh, but still, I like that uh, better than a, a silicon band. It is easy to remove, uh, really easy to remove, uh, like most watch. You don't have a lot of choice if you want to replace the band uh, at Sunto. Uh, but still, you can probably look for another brand that is the same uh, the same size and you could replace it. One other, another great thing... Uh, they did is that in the box you got a bigger band so if you have a big wrist and you are the type of person that when you buy a watch the band doesn't fit you uh, you got something a bit bigger if you need that but another thing we can say about the band is that if i take that one off that one by the way is the watch that i'm testing right now if you're curious that's the tactic 7 and i, and I did replace uh, the band for something more quality um okay another thing i don't like about about the the band is that well i don't know what they think but you know, you know what you see that's an island band and uh when you set it to your wrist you see you have that that little guy that you can move all around so uh if you just set it like that you take that guy at the end and you see you're fine and there's nothing that is just like that okay so if we take the Sunto 9 one well you just put it just like that and then you move it to close it and you see there's that thing that i don't like that i really don't like that seriously those things can't move i can set it on the other side that will be less worse but still there is that thing that still come off and if i touch it you see well it finished to just end up like that and 
It's terrible. Why? What? What did they, did they, they, they think when they made that? Um, I think it's a really, really poor uh, band. But still, I like it more than a, 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 a silicon band. Uh, another thing, uh, the buttons, I think they look great in front, not in the back, like I said. But um, it feels like if I press on Marshmallow. It, uh, when you press it, it's very, very soft. And when you arrive at the end, the watch produce a vibration. I would have liked to have a clicky something. You see, it, it, it just vibrate. And if I take a real watch, well, you see, you got clickiness. There's no clicky on that one. So, yeah, I think that, that's, that's it for the look and the build quality. And I will put that, that watch. <laughs> the next point is about the glass. The glass. Well, that's a very good thing for a watch at this price. Uh, you have a sapphire crystal glass. That is something that I'm looking for on every watch that I buy for myself. I want absolutely to have a sapphire crystal glass because it is almost not scratchable. I never been able to scratch a glass a sapphire crystal glass it, it just never happened it's really 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 resistant so that's a very good thing the lens is flat and it is a little bit uh deep inside uh the watch just a little bit so uh, you don't really have to care about uh your screen it is uh, protected now let's talk about the choice you have when you buy the watch in terms of color and kind of model. If we only speak about the Suunto 9, it comes in three models. You have the Suunto 9, this is the Suunto 9 Baro, and there is the Suunto 9 Peak. Uh, I think the Suunto 9 doesn't have a Baro, otherwise it wouldn't make sense that this one is the Suunto 9 Baro. The Peak is a smaller version of that one. It is uh, less thick and uh, it's, it's smaller on every way. And it's, it's about the same thing. All those three watch are about the same thing. They're just coming in a different case with different band and different color. So you have a couple of options when you are looking for a Suunto 9. Now let's speak about the GPS precision. Uh, I think it's very great if you're using it into performance mode. Uh, the performance, the per performance mode is the one that will give you the more accurate data. If you go under it, um, well, uh, I, I think it's, it's useless. You're going to have a too slow frequency of recording uh, position. So at the end, the length of your activity will be false, probably under of what you really do if you do turn. Um, so yes, it will be under and when you are using the watch, <laughs> sometime you, you will not be able to see the speed you are going because it doesn't record uh, enough uh, frequently to, to do so. So uh, it, you must use it at the best accurate options and everything is fine. Otherwise, it's crap. Now let's talk about the hearth rate and I'm happy that it just turned on because it's terrible. It's terrible. The earth rate. Um, when you are using the watch as a smartwatch, just like that on your wrist, there's something I can do with my Garmin that I can't with that one, and it's that, my earth rate going actually at 65 beats per minute. It's not possible with it. I need to, actually, you see, it does turn off. It's not possible because it does read your earth rate sometimes every hours. Two to three times, I would say. Um, the rest of the time, it just it just doesn't do anything. So you can't have a full tracking of, of your heart rate in the day. It's it going to be at the point where it does read it. So if, for example, you are, you are sitting on the chair all day long and at the very minute you, you, you go up of the stairs, it does your reading, well, it can falls your heart rate for the day. You understand? Uh, so uh, if I, if I want to have my actual earth rate, I need to press the down button and wait, wait, wait. And now it says 81. I don't know how does it make to say 81 because actually I'm, it's not on my skin. Still 81. 
Uh, it's very bizarre. And <laughs> when you wear it and into inactivity, it's just not accurate. Sometimes it's really too high, like 250 while walking. 250, I would be dead. Or if I running and climbing, it could say 80. Like, like, it just never makes sense. N not never. Sometimes it's gonna make sense, but too many times it does give you false information that, well, when you take a look at it, you, you just ask yourself if you can trust it or not. So at the end, you never trust it. Um, yeah, that's the way it is. So in my opinion, uh, if Sunto continue to make those crappy hearth rate sensor, well, just stop making it. Don't put hearth rate sensor on your watch and charge less. Uh, because actually you pay for something that doesn't work properly. Uh, so that's a shame. <laughs> Another thing I really don't like about the hearth rate is that when you just put your watch just like that on the table, maybe because you're going to sleep and you don't want to wear it while you're asleep, like I said, you see, if I take my Garmin watch off, you will see a green light on the back. Can you see it? Oh, you see, it's already turned off. If I wear it some seconds again, it will turn on rapidly on because it detects uh, it is on my skin. And when I remove it, it detects no skin. It just top. This one doesn't know if you wear it. So it just take a look sometime and when it doesn't when it's not able to read your hearth rate, it will do a big green light for one minute or two and probably you're sleeping and that will wake you up because it's really, really a bright light. Let's try it again. You see there's that green light and then it turns off really quickly. And then I will put it back, put it back on and in a few seconds I will have my hearth rate showing back up. So yeah, it's really, really weird what they've done with uh, with that, it's very poor quality hearth rate sensor. The next point is how the watch is independent from anything. And it's not. It's very, very dependent from the Sunto app. So if you want to change almost anything, you have to pass by the Sunto app. There is something you can change straight from the watch. You can change the language. You can change your uh, size, your weight, uh, those kind of things. Uh, you can change your watch face. There are some things you can do, but uh, when you want to do something uh, about an activity or sync the activity or those kind of things, you need the Sunto app on your Android or on iOS. Um, <laughs> uh, if you want to edit the data fields you have into the watch, you need the app. If you want to add a uh, POE, a point of interest, some, somewhere you want to go, the submit of, of something, the restaurant in the city or somewhere you want to go, you need to pass through the app. If you want to create an itinerary, you need the app. If you want to add, remove those point of interest that you already create, you need the app. You always need the app to do something about a location, an itinerary, or the data fields inside your activity. If you don't have it, it just doesn't work. So yes, it is dependent from the app. You can also use the uh, Sunto link application on Windows or Mac OS, uh, but that one will be only to sync your activity to the Suntio app with the USB cable. That's it. Which brings us to the next point, and it's about its resistance to disuse. And that's a red flag. Um, you see, it's a brand new watch, and I will talk about it in a few minutes, but the watch is laggy. Um, I don't know if it's because the processor is not strong enough or it's just not well programmed to work well with the processor, but the watch is new and it feels like your phone after three years that becomes slow. It is new and it is slow. So what will it done in few we few years with some updates? That's worry me. And the fact that the watch is very dependent from the app is a big red flag 
because it is Sunto. And if we take a look at the history of Sunto, my good old Sunto MB2 and 3 were working on an app that was called MoveScout. And a few years ago, Sunto shut down MoveScout and the first idea, that's what they tell us in the email, is that, well, your watch will no longer be usable. <laughs> so buy a new watch to get the Sunto app. See, so that they were releasing the Sunto app on the phone and they were shutting down MoveScout for the older watch. Probably that too many people complained, so they made something, but the first idea was just to forget about all their old customers. That was disgusting. And, well, actually, actually, everything is fine. They sold everything and every watch still is, is still working. Uh, but still, uh, you... The longevity of your watch is all about the Suunto Elf and Decision. Because if they go bankrupt and the app shut down, uh, you can't change anything on your watch. The watch will keep working, give you your position and those things, but you will no longer be able to sync your activity. You will be no longer able to uh, edit your activity and all those things, add POEs, create itinerary. You will be no, no longer able to do that if Suunto go bankrupt. That's where me. Because if I go like with Garmin, everything you can edit, uh, you can do it on the watch, straight from the watch. You can also do, at, do that from the app, but you can also do that from the watch. And if they go bankrupt and you can't uh, sync your watch to the app, like you can, like, like with Suunto, you can still connect the watch with a USB cable and extract the data without an application from Garmin, which is not possible with Suunto. The next point is about, is it possible to use a watch upside down? And no. It's not possible. It's a point that I uh, put on my list because uh, it is possible with Kuros. Every Kuros watch, I think, can be reversed and used the way you want. So personally, I would have liked to have the button on the left instead of the right because I prefer to use my thumb instead of my index to use the button. But it's just not possible. That's the way it is. Then the next point is about the quantity of sport available inside the watch. And it's a lot. Uh, let's go to that list. I will tell, tell you all, all of them. Let's go down, down, other. Okay, so we have running, trail running, cycling, mountain biking, indoor cycling, roller skating, triathlon, obstacle racing, motorsport, orienteering, track and field, Roller skiing, cross training, aerobics, yoga, pilates, uh, martial arts, boxing, cross trainer, dancing, gymnastic, indoor rowing, stretching, kettlebell, trekking, walking, climbing, horse riding, mountaineering, Nordic walking, paragliding, fishing, hunting, snowboarding, high skating, telemark skiing, snowshoeing, Sailing, kayaking, rowing, surfing, canoeing, windsurfing, stand-up paddleboard, kite surfing, basketball, soccer, ice hockey, volleyball, American football, softball, cheerleading, baseball, paddle, paddle, it's uh, like tennis or something like that, I don't know what it is, badminton, table tennis, racquetball, squash, floorball, bowling, cricket, golf, handball, rugby, frisbee, and unspecified sport for others. So there's a lot of sport, probably that anything you do uh, have an activity just like that. So, so cricket, you can do cricket with your Suunto watch. <laughs> so you, you have a lot of options. That's really awesome. And the great thing about that, it's they all built in inside the watch. So you don't need to go into the app to make the sport available into your watch. They are just all right there. But if you want to edit what is inside the app, then you need the app. And we changed of plan just right now because I had to uh, edit something that I say. I'm actually doing the editing and I need to correct something that I say about the multi-sport mode. That is very well done. Uh, when you are into an activity, you can at any moment press and hold the top button to uh, create a multi-sport mode. So let's say that you start running and at some point you are tired and you just want to walk. You can press and hold the top button, select from the list of sport available 
any of them so you will scroll down to walk select it and you will change to the walk activity so the multi-sport mode is very well done so let's come back to pascal on the other plan that was recording that video that you're watching right now the next point is about the watch face how can you customize it um there's a great there are some great options uh you have many types of uh of watch face it's almost sure you will find one that suits you the negative side of it is that yes you can choose between all of those watch face but when you choose it you can't customize it you have to live with the data soon to decide you will have on it so actually i have the sunrise time the battery level there's a three hours there that i don't know what it is and there's uh someone that is running there just right there with a graph that i think will fill up uh i think it's the number of step of the day and <laughs> you see i can change the data but to change the data i need to press a button and then touch the screen so I need to press a button to wake the touch screen and then touch the screen to change the data. So actually already off. So I need to press it again. And now it take me back to the right page. I need to go back and then I can press. So now I have the date. I have the uh, sunset, sunrise, altitude. And then it goes in circle. But you can't choose what data you will have here if there's a data you don't want you can't remove it if there is one you want you can't add it it just it's it's that's watch face and you have to live with it um i think it's sad i think it's sad i wouldn't i would like to have more information on my watch face like on my garmin that now i can see the sunset time which is the next uh, next occurrence instead of having having it on two uh, my altitude by battery level the, te the actual temperature the highs and lows of the day and my number of steps the date my hearth rate and the time of course so that one only battery percentage and one more info that i need to press a button and then come back and then press the touch screen to change the data poorly done Okay, now let's talk about the widget. What are widget? Uh, widget are some things you can find inside the watch. So just like there, I got. I don't know if you can see. I have the. Uh, that is my earth ray. That is uh, <laughs> my stress level, number of step of the day, uh, times of trainings of the day, my actual altitude my sleep tracking and that one i don't know what it is uh and inside it you have a few more options so you can have graph of the week so your steps in a graph of the week so you can see what day of the week you make the more most uh, step you have, uh, you have the same thing about your earth rate your altitude the uh, the, the barometric pr pressure and all those things there is one widget that uh, that i would really like to have and it's the weather because i really like that when i'm going outside especially in winter and i i want to look at how what what, what will, will i wear to go uh walk or uh, run and i just have to do that and it's actually 12 degrees outside it's simple as that uh here i don't even have the weather at anywhere so it's not it's not just not available which bring us to the next point <laughs> because i was boiling to talk about it while talking about widget it's how the watch is easy to use how efficiency the interface is made and that that is terrible uh the first mistake they made is to remove the two button they were on the end bit so previously you had five buttons like you have on the studio five there's five buttons and well they remove two buttons to gi give place to a touch screen and i think it's a really poor idea uh yes the touch screen does some great things but especially from a company from finland somewhere where where it's cold and you need sometime gloves you know that with gloves it doesn't go well on a touch screen so 
Please, Sunto, if you keep doing new Sunto 9 model, put back the two button on the left. Just give us the option to use the touchscreen or the buttons. Do not force us to use the, the buttons. So, like, for example, if I go down on my, I don't know, my steps of the day. See, I have my steps of the day. I did go down at this page, and if I go right, I fall on the second page. And as you can see here, there's also a third page. And if I want to come back to the first page, well, there is no back button. I need to go out of the third page and then come back to the first one. And actually, there's only three page. Imagine when you are into an activity and you have five, six, or seven page. You can have up to eight page. So if you pass to, well, actually, uh, when I'm not into an activity, when I'm on the, that second page, just like that, I can come back to the previous one just like that. I can swipe. But when you are into an activity, the touch screen is disabled. So you need to use those buttons. Uh, if I, oh, okay, I see. I just learned that. You can, you can hold the middle button to come back on the left. So if you press it, you go on the right, and if you hold it, you come back. But still, why not just a back button instead of doing double function press or hold? I think it's poorly done. Uh, the other thing is that it's very laggy. You, every time you change page, <laughs> You feel it loading. And the first one is the worst. And let, let me show you how, how it works, okay? Let's say we want to go to the altitude. The first thing you need to do, well, you have to go down with that button, okay? So we go down. The first one is the hearth rate. And actually, it did go fast. Usually, it's a lot slower. Maybe it was already on. I don't know. Let's come back and wait a little bit. Uh, the thing is, you need to pass the earth rate and because the earth rate is always off it needs to turn on and then take a look at your earth rate before showing it to you but while it is loading the watch is frozen so you can't skip to the next one you have to wait that it loads and then you can't go down okay let's do it again so i go down it was quick why it is quick while i'm <laughs> doing it on camera usually it's really really slow trust me and and yeah you, you need to you need to let's try it again okay we got a time let's take that light off <laughs> ah come on it's still on it's not on me actually i'm on training maybe if i go out of there it will eventually turn off yeah actually it goes off okay let's give it another try See, well, it's it's quick. It's seriously sometimes it takes up to two seconds. Usually it takes up to two seconds before it go. But anyway, you need to go down. You need to wait, and you feel. Let's let's see some other uh, pages. So let's restart that again. You see, I I go up. No, no, actually I was going right. Now I can't go up because I'm on the page on the right. So I need to come back to the first page to go up. And okay. So I'm here, I'm going down, it is loading. Now you see it's slow, okay. Now I got my earth rate, now I can go down. I can see my stress level, uh, number of steps of the day. And if I wanna have more information about it, I can go on the right. But when you are on the right, you can't go down. Uh, well, in fact, you go down into that page. Uh, still the same thing, but if you want to go down to another option, you need to come back to the first page and then you can go down. And if you want to see that's, that was the altitude, yes. And I want to see the barometric, I can go on the right. But if I want to come back to the other one, I need to come back to the first page. And it's, it's, it's complicated. It's complicated. It's poorly, it's poorly designed. And another thing about it is that, yes, they put a touchscreen, which is not a bad thing if, you, if they give you the option to still use the button, but you can realize that the watch is still not think to be used with a touchscreen. Let's say, for example, that I want to go into the menu up here. So I go up, 
I got exercise. I go up. I got my navigation. I go up. I got my uh, that. That's a logbook. Uh, see, you all have those big screen that you need to go up every time. What I would have liked to had, what what I would have liked the they built is a menu just like this one so you can use a touch screen actually you see there's a lot of options and you can simply click on it to select it but still there they made that into the menu but it's poorly done so let's say that from here I want to go into connectivity so what I would like is that when I press on connectivity I go into connectivity but you can't if you press on connectivity it will Take it to the middle so you can click it again. Why? When I press connectivity, I want to go inside connectivity. I don't want you to take it to the middle so I can press it in the middle. I press it when, when it was down. Just go inside. It's, it's built to work with buttons, but they remove buttons to put the touch screen. It's stupid. And, and when you are inside something, if you want to go back, you need to swipe and put your gross finger into it actually probably that i can hold that button and go back yes i can hold the button you can do everything with three buttons but now it, it just take more time because of instead of just clicking on the back button you need to hold the right button <laughs> another terrible uh, example was there something else before i go to the next point no <laughs> so so the next terrible thing is inside the music control so about music before i go further let's do that example when you are on the main screen you can press the right button it will take you to the music control app that can control the music of your phone you will see the name of the track that is playing you can skip to the next one you can restart the one, the, the same song if you double press the back button you can go back to the previous song it will tell you at where, where you are inside the song so if you have a two minute songs and the and it's played at, at one minute uh well you will see that you are at 50 percent of that song you can control the volume of your phone you can do all those things with the touch screen and it does work very well if you doesn't have a glove uh but that's that's when you are not into an activity when you are into an activity the touch screen is disabled and you need to use the button so in that case you will have i think it's the top button that do next the lower button that do pause but if you hold it it bring up the volume menu and then you can go up and down and then you can go out of that by pressing the right button that usually change page and if you hold the top one it goes back you see it's very confusing i don't like that <laughs> i don't like that it would be so much simpler with five buttons but speaking of music, uh, you can't store music inside your watch, put Bluetooth headphone and listen to music that is coming out from the watch. Anyway, it is something that I don't recommend when you have a watch that can do it because it drains out the battery like crazy. So, but still, you're able to control the music of your phone and at some point, I think, even with the button into the activity, you can get used to it and it's probably going very well. Unfortunately, there is no option to have a shortcut. So let's say, for example, on my Garmin, anywhere I am on the on the main screen, on into an activity or something, if I want to do something about music, the only thing I need to do is to press and hold the lower button and I have my control with the five buttons or the, or the touch screen. That's up to me. Uh, with that one, uh, you need to go to the page. So if you are on, on, the on the main interface, you need to go on the right page. And if you are into an activity, you need to move to the music page. So if it's the seventh one and you are on the main one, well, you need to press the button several times up, uh, up to the time you reach that page. And well, yeah, uh, yeah that's, again, poorly done. Now, let's talk about the battery life. Um, not that good. Not that good. I wear it 24 hours a day on my first charge, except for showering. And the battery lasts five days and a quarter. Into those five days and a quarter, I use the GPS for eight hours and 45 minutes. Uh, it's not that much for a watch, a big watch like this one. It could last way much longer. Um, 
eight hours and 45 minutes of GPS. That includes 70 minutes of uh, Econo mode. So that drains really slowly, but create a really, really poor uh, track of your activity. And 46 minutes in, into endurance mode. Uh, the, uh, the rest was into the best, uh, best possible mode. So possibly that instead of eight hours and 45 minutes, I would have had something like seven hour and a half, something like that, maybe seven hour, I don't know, uh, but far less. Um, well, that's the way it is. That's the way it is. It's not, it's not a big battery in there. And <laughs> uh, there's no solar charging. There's just not. You may also realize if you reach 5% of battery that the screen will turn off to save itself. So if you're into an activity, you're running and at some point you see that there's nothing on the screen, uh, maybe your battery is dead or maybe your screen is just off. You can press a button, it will turn on for a few seconds and then it will turn back off. That's how it works. About the charge indicator, when you are on the main screen, you got a battery percentage. So actually I can see that it remains 61%, uh, but you don't have an idea of how much time this can last. Uh, that's something I like to have. Actually, I can see that it is remained seven days of battery. How much percentage? I don't know. I can I can go see. Uh, it's 55, 25, 25% 25 seven days of battery. Uh, but, but what I want to know is how much time I have left. One thing that is really well done, however, if that when 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 you go start into an activity, so let's go into exercise and select running, you will see at the top. You see, I'm still waiting now. It's fine. Let, I'll show it back to you again. See, it's still loading. Okay, let's get into the activity like that. And now it's ready. Uh, and on the top here, you have the time of battery left you have. And if you see again that charge, uh, if you come here and add some option, when you will come back to the top, uh it will tell you how much time of battery left you have that was 15 hours for my 61 percent of battery temperature recommendation uh soon to recommend you to use uh the watch between minus 20 celsius to plus 55 celsius and if you are still in that only one country that still use uh fahrenheit well it's minus five to plus 130. Now let's talk about the screen lisibility. Not that great. Uh, in fact, it's almost terrible. Actually, it's really hard to see even with those big lights. When you are outside at sunlight, that's totally fine. But when you are inside with medium light uh, to low light, it's terrible. Fortunately, they have the uh, movement sensor that you can enable, but it never worked. <laughs> well, not never, but when I am outside of an activity, there is an option to enable it. I did enable it, but every time I do that, it doesn't work. If I go inside an activity, it does work, but with a delay. Uh, I did test with Garmin, I did test with Karos, and I did test with Polar. They all work great. But that one, there's the delay. So if, I, if I'm if i here with my Garmin and I want to take a look at it at night when I'm running or cycling, I just do that and it's already light up just by doing the movement. That one, I take it up, wait, and then it turns on. There's that delay of, I would say, between half, a, half of a second and one second and a half. I want to see the information just right now. I don't want to wait. It's poorly done. It's poorly done. And and inside, the lisibility, this lisibility is just terrible. And other downside is that because they removed those button on the left, previously you had a light button just right here on the top left, and it's not there anymore. So now you need to press a button to turn on the light, and by pressing that button, sometime, sometime, it will change screen. Uh, because you press a button, so... 
you do something. You want to do something when you press that button. So you just want to turn on the light. So you need to press a button. It will go up and then you will need to go down to see what you were wanting to see. So you need to press two buttons instead of one. <sighs> one thing that is really well done, however, is that when you go into do not disturb mode, that's the mode you usually usually use at night. Well, the backlight dims. So if you want to take a look at the time when you are in your bed, uh, you will not be all light up with a very bright light. Now about notification and answers. Well, well, you can get your notification on the watch, but that's pretty much it. You can't reply or those kind of things. So when you do receive a text message, messenger message, uh, email or something, you will see who is sending you something with a little uh, idea of what it has been sent. I'm just thinking about when I was uh, talking about the watch face, I want to come back on this. Uh, actually, you see there is the uh, actual altitude, but when the arrow passed just in front of it, the arrow just hide it. So at some point of in the day, you're not able to read that information. Now let's talk about trust. Uh, there's three parts of trust. The trust in the data of GPS. Like I said, it's good when you use it in performance mode. The trust into the hearth rate sensor, which is absolutely bad because I think they, they, they just should remove it. And there's the trust inside. Will it fail me? Will it crash? Will I lose my activity? Will it crash when I need it? And when it will crash, I will lost my track and I will not be able to track back while I really need it. Uh, this part, I don't really trust it because, like I said, the watch feels very laggy and I'm worried that it crash. And actually, if you start an activity before you start it, if you enable too much option when you go back to the page to start the activity, the watch crash every time if I enable too much. It's not something that I do, but it's something that I did test because I test the watch and it crashed every time. I tested six times in a row and it crashed six times in a row. So I don't really trust. I'm not, I'm not fully trusting the device. Now let's talk about water resistance and it's graded for 10 ADM, which means you can dive up to 100 meter. So you don't really have to care about anything unless you go deeper than 100 meter. You can wash your hand, you can shower, you can swim, you can dive, you can do fast water sport. There is no problem. It will handle it. No problem. Now let's talk about mapping. Come on, Sunto. There's no map, still no map. And that one is hard to swallow because I didn't test the Sunto 7, which is a model under it, but it does have mapping. This is their past watch and it doesn't have mapping. Come on. It, it, you can navigate the same way that I was able to do it in 2013 with my Sunto Mbit 2. We are nine years later and it's still the same breadcrumb. So this means you navigate on a black screen and when you are walking, cycling or whatever, it will create a blue line that let you come back on your track. I mean, it's fine. It's a very great tool. It already saved my life twice with my good old Mbit because I was lost in the mountain or I was lost on top of a mountain with a very uh, big snowstorm that was erasing my feet, my, my, my track a minute after I passed on it. So I was not able to see in front of me. I didn't know in which direction I was going. And I did use the breadcrumb to just come back on my track. That did save my life that day. And that would still make the same thing, but 
come on, put a map. I want to see the streets. I want to see uh, the topography. I want to see where is the lake, the river, and those things. Come on, put a map, put a map. But it's not all negative, because if you want to create an itinerary, this is really, really well done. Unfortunately, you can only do it on the Sunjo app, so you need to do that on your phone. If you want to create a big itinerary, you probably better like to work on a big screen on your computer. Well, you can't. You need to do that on the Sunto app. But the Sunto app for creating an itinerary is really well done. You just press somewhere on the map where you want to start and you choose the type of road you want to use. You go at your endpoint, you hit it, and you have an itinerary. If it passes somewhere you don't want, you can create multiple points. So you can create one, two, three, four, forty points if you'd like. It's really up to you. And the the system they built to create an itinerary is really, really well done. Once you've done that on the map, on the Sunto app, uh, it will send just the line so you can follow it on on the watch <laughs> but you will not be able to have a map you will not be able to see on which road you are you will just have a line to follow when you want to come back to your starting point you have two options you can go in straight line into that direction for example so it will tell you well you start two kilometers away into that direction so go in straight line and you, you will reach it or you can just track back so follow follow the track on on the screen Another thing that I would have liked to see is the loop itinerary. That is something we have in Garmin. Uh, that lets you, let's say, for example, you are into a country that you don't know and you want to do a 10K. You don't know where you will go and you want to discover. You can ask the watch to create you a 10K loop itinerary and it will do it. Of course, you can't do that with that watch because, well, there's no mapping. The next point is about starring that one <laughs> I put it on my list just because of Suntio because it's the only watch brand from Coros, Garmin, Suntio and Polar that you can't turn off you just can't so I don't know if you're not using the watch very often you use it on a month or two or you just change your watch and have this one in backup. Well, the day you will want to use it, the battery will be dead because you can't turn it off. It will turn off when the battery will be dead. You can reboot the watch, but you can't turn it off. The next point is about the screen size on the watch size. Uh, not good. You see, that's the watch, and if you can focus, there is that big black bezel all around that have absolutely no purpose. Uh, there is nothing written there. It's just a big, thick black bar. It's really, really useless. That makes, that's the Garmin Tactics, which is the same size of a Phoenix X, any, any model, 7, 6, uh, six seven x whatever so there's my head there's three type of watch there is the regular size the small size and the big size so if i compare it with the garmin tactics i can say that because if i set them one on top of the other uh maybe i would say that the it's one millimeter smaller than uh than the, than the tactics the sunto is one millimeter smaller but <laughs> It does have the same screen size as uh, this. This is the Epix 2. Uh, it's the same size of a regular. It's a regular uh, size watch. So it is way bigger. But it have the same screen size. So if I compare it with Garmin. Let's say that again. It is as big as the big model. But the screen is small like the medium model. And it's sad because they they did a great great job to create that small bezel, but they put back a big bezel inside that just served nothing. Now let's talk about wave and comfort. That is really impressive for a big watch. It's very lightweight. It's not the most lightweight watch, of course, 
but for a watch of this size, it is very lightweight. And I did talk about in, in bad about the the uh, watch band earlier, but still, uh, when you wear it, apart the fact that you got that thing at the end, uh, it is very comfortable. The watch is very comfortable. It breathes well. Uh, the watch is comfortable and light. Now let's talk about the language available. There is few of them and I will <laughs> pass them in review. So let's go into settings, general, wait, go down, languages. And let's start with the first one, which is, uh, well, actually I did translate it on that one. That will be more easier. Uh, so we got Danish, German, English, Spanish, French, Italian, uh, Dutch, uh, Norwegian, Portuguese, Finnish, Swedish, uh, Japanese, Korean, uh, Croat, and uh, Polsky. Now, let's talk about the data fields you will find into an activity, and that is kind of well done. Uh, you can have up to, well, let's say, the fewest information you can have on a single page is two information plus a graph. So you will have a big information on top, a big information at the bottom, and you have a graph for, I don't know, of uh, maybe your elevation, your hearth rate, or those kind of things. You can have a graph of many things. And you can go up to seven, seven data. So you choose seven data. And you have in bonus the time. So that makes eight. And you also have in bonus uh, your earth rate zone all around. So you have nine information on the same page. That is really cool. Uh, the only thing is that because the screen is so small, uh, it is small so might be hard to read depending of what you are doing as activity if you're playing cricket well that's probably fine but if you are running or cycling you may want to have something bigger so you will may need to put less information on the screen the real downside about this is that you can't modify the data fields of your activity while you are into an activity so for example if you are cycling and you are climbing something and you want to have the uh, actual grade of the hill you are in and you forget to put that information before you start the activity well you have two options you just live with it <laughs> or you stop the activity you end the activity you go on your phone you go into the application you go into the <laughs> Sport activity, you add the info you want, and then you sync the watch, you wait, and then you restart a new activity. So you broke your activity, and it does take a lot of time to add it on the watch. Because when you want to modify something on the watch, the watch needs to be not busy, and to be not busy, it needs to be on the watch face doing nothing. Now, let's talk about alarm. Uh... <laughs> Well, the alarm works. Uh, <laughs> it does uh, ring and vibrate. You can't have just vibration. You need to have both. And you only have three options. Uh, well, in fact, there is four kind of alarms. Uh, there is the alarms, the one that you use to wake up. There is one that you can set before sunset, one before sunrise. And there is the storm alarm. So if the uh, atmospheric pressure drop, it will ring to let you know that a storm isn't coming. But the one that I, wa I wanted to talk about is the one that you use to wake up. Uh, you can only have one. You can't set two if you need to have two. You can't. And you have three options. It's on. So if I want to wake up tomorrow at six o'clock, I set it to tomorrow at six o'clock for once and once it will ring, it will turn off. The other two options are weekdays. So Monday, Monday to Friday or all days. So all days. But if you want to have something just for the weekend or just Wednesday or Monday and Tuesday, you can't. You just can't. Now let's talk about the sleep tracking. Uh, it works well, but from all the watch brand that I've tested, it's the one that gives you the less details. Uh, you will know your average hearth rate, your minimum hearth rate, the time you sleep, and uh, the time you deep sleep. 
The rest, you don't know. You don't know at what time you did deep sleep. You don't know at what time you did wake up. You didn't know anything. You just have that little tiny information. Uh, by default, it's not enabled. I don't know why, but it's not enabled. Another another stupid thing that I find is that when you enable it, they ask you, what time are you sleeping? At what what time? From 22 o'clock to 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock to whatever. You, you need to input that information. And by doing it, they do not auto-enable, do not disturb. So the first night I did use it, I've been wake up because of a stupid email that was ringing on my wrist. So the watch is monitoring your sleep and it tells itself that it's a good idea to let you know that a stupid email just get in. Fortunately, you can go into do not disturb mode and put a schedule to it, but you just have to think about it. Now the next point is about how the watch motivates you to move. And well, it's not. <laughs> Well, of course, you got to put a pedometer. You can see how much step you have done. But the watch doesn't do anything to push you to do something more. For me, it, it, just the fact to have a watch that record all of my activity and that at the end I can have a calendar that show me that I did an activity every day of the years for over two years. That's something that motivates me to use a watch. But that one doesn't... Do anything over that to motivate me to move now let's talk about the altimeter and that's a very good one because as you can see on this side here there is that hole that is the entry of the barometer so the barometer calculates the, the atmospheric pressure and as you know when you do climb in elevation the atmospheric pressure drops so that is a very great tool uh, that the watch can use to give you a accurate altitude so this mix with the GPS it does a wonderful job. Now, let's talk about price. And I will not say it into the video because they do change over time from a country to another. So you can use my link in the description to see the actual price. Depending on the country you are in, you may have access to many stores. So you can compare. And if you buy through those links, well, thank you because I receive a commission out of it. And that helps me to buy some new watches to make some other great reviews. But if I talk about the price that I can see today, uh, it's not that bad considering the fact that you have a sapphire crystal glass, um, you got nylon band. Um, well, that's the positive things. <laughs> uh, it is not that bad, but if it was just about me, uh, I would put less money inside the watch to get a Garmin Instinct. Uh, which done, I would say, more, which have a great hearth rate sensor, but doesn't have a sapphire crystal glass, and is ugly. Yes, it's ugly, uh, but it do more for less. I would do that, or I would put a lot more money to get a Phoenix 6 or 7. That will do a lot more, and that will have a, 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 a mapping uh, that will have a great earth rate, that will have a better battery, that will have everything better. I will, I will have five buttons, <laughs> all those things. So, yeah, I, I think it's not overpriced, but I don't see the point of buying it. But anyway, it's not done. There is some other things to see. And the next one is uh, the antenna compatibility. Uh, what can you connect on it? Uh, you have hertz rate sensors, you got a pedometer, you have some things you can put on your bike and those kind of things. Uh, they need to be Bluetooth smart. Uh, ANT and ANT Plus doesn't work, it's just Bluetooth smart. And another downside is that I think it's the first watch that I test in the last few months that doesn't have broadcast hertz rate. Broadcast earth rate is an option that you can use to share the earth rate of your wrist to another device. So if you're on the uh, tread miles or a stationary bike, you can probably share your earth rate to that device. With that one, you can't. But anyway, if it could, you won't do that because it doesn't work well. <laughs> 
Oh, let's talk about the USB cable. <sighs> the one they used before was the Klimp. That was terrible because it was hard to put every time. And I didn't thought they could done worse. Actually, I think it's Eagle. Uh, it's really, really strong. Uh, I love, I love when they do magnet stuff. You see that, that is really heavy and it hold it and it hold it kind of well. It's impressive. It's a very strong magnet. And the way it work is that you can set it right here on the back. And seriously, it's look weird. Have you already see a cable like this one? Hey, focus, focus, come on, come on camera, focus. Yeah, it's just like something that have been created by a five years old little guy that it doesn't look professional. It looks weird. And you set it, you see you got at the back, there is that rail, that's the magnet that come in and there's the four pins. So you have to look at what side you put it and you just bring it like that. And it doesn't fit at the right place. <sighs> you have to move it then and now it's fine. But actually I did it a lot. Of, yeah, actually it's not fine. So yeah, I need to move it again. So it's magnetized, but it doesn't always come in at the right place. On its, in, on, on its in place, it's very, very solid, of course. That's great. But it not always fall in the right place. It's poorly done. Poorly done. Now let's talk about the synchronization speed after you're done with an activity. And usually it's done in under a minute. So you end the activity, your phone is not too far. The watch connect on it. You doesn't have to turn on the app. It just done that on the background and your activity are synchronized. Uh, that goes well most of the time. Sometimes you will have to turn on the, uh, the app and manually sync it. And in very few case, you may still have to connect it to your computer because otherwise the activity seems to be lost. I don't know. Uh, well, that's the way it is. But most of the time it does work very well. By the way, I tell you about all of those things of the watch, but if you want to have a closer look at it of how it works, I can show you a playlist of video in which I am showing you how the, it is a tutorial video in which I show you how to use the watch and it's available just right here. You will probably enjoy it. That's on my how to channel. The next points are about comparison with Garmin. Those are uh, options that are available with Garmin watch that is not available here. And they are a function that I like. So I think it's worth to mention it. The first one is the life track. So if you want to share your actual position from the watch to someone uh, that can follow you, uh, that is something that is possible in here. Every time I start an activity, some people have access to it and they can see where I am live. Uh, it's just not possible with Sunto. The next one is auto climb. Uh, that is a feature that gives you the ability, still only with Garmin, uh, when you do climb. So let's say you are cycling on flat and you have something that starts to climb. Well, uh, maybe when you are on the flat, you want to have your speed, your earth rate and your distance. And when you are climbing, you still want to have your earth rate, but you want to have uh, the hill grade. You will want to have the actual altitude, uh, your vertical speed and those kind of details. Well, when it will detect that you are climbing, it will auto switch to that page that you determine you want to have when you are climbing. And when you will come back on flat or going down, it will switch back to the flat page. Very well done, but not available with Sunto. The next one is, oh yeah, that's the anim animation you can have when you do a weight training. Uh, so with Garmin, you can create yourself a program and it will show you how to create with an animated character how to do your move again it's not available here and we could also say the same thing about golf so if you want to go play golf you will not be able to see 
where you are on the golf course, uh, the distance between you and the hole, and those kind of things, you don't have it. With Sun Tzu, only with Garmin. Now let's talk about customer service. And it did go better in the last years. As I've seen, previously I had my Sun Tzu MB2 screen that dies and I send many emails. I didn't, I didn't try to call, maybe I should have, but I did send many emails and they never answer me. Uh, recently, I don't know why I did send them an email, but whatever, I did chat with them. The answer was really quick. The, 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 the woman I was speaking to was really nice. And I had a follow-up by email a few days later. That was normal. Um, and yeah, that was quick. I did reply and then they reply. That was all good. Customer service seems to be good those days. There's one other thing that I do respect a lot about Sunto, and it's the fact that they built their watch into their own country in Finland. Unfortunately, <laughs> uh, on some point it feels like it, it was done in China. Some things looks very cheap to me. Uh, but I do respect when a company do its stuff into its own country. Thank you Sunto for doing it. The next point is kind of stupid, especially for me that is trying a lot of watch. But the Sunto app can be synced with only one watch at a time. So I don't know if you want to have that one for hiking and you want to have a Sunto 5 Peak. Don't buy a Sunto 5 Peak. Seriously, it's so, so plasticky. Uh, e even the glass is in plastic. So. Stay away from it. But let's say you want to have a Sunto 5 Peak for running because it's very lightweight. Um, <laughs> uh, you will have to unsync the Sunto 9 at the end to sync the Sunto 5. And the next time you will want to use your Sunto 9, you will have to unsync your Sunto 5 to sync your Sunto 9. Come on. Let let me sync all of my watch at the same time. I do it with, well, you see, I have a lot of Garmin watches and I can sync them all with the same phone and there's no problem. So, <laughs> final words. Um, and I have to say, I was a uh, few years ago, Sunto was my favorite watch brand. And it did change because they didn't evolve. And actually, Seriously, I would rather use my good old MB3 Peak instead of that Sun Tonight because it was better. It was seriously better. There were there were no lag, and there were the same feature. There was no hearth rate sensor at the back, but this one doesn't work anyway. So uh, the screen was easier to read. Um. And it was the very same feature. There's, I don't think there is something on that watch that my good old MB3 was not able to do. And my old MB3 had five buttons instead of three. So it's not a watch that I recommend at all. Stay away from it. <laughs> like I said, uh, if you are shopping into that price range, I would put less money and put it on a Garmin Instinct. Or if you are if you have the budget to put even more, uh, go with a Garmin Phoenix. And probably pay the extra to have the Sapphire Crystal Glass because that's a very great thing that one have. But you can put a bit more money and have a, a Garmin Phoenix. And that will be way better. Way better. So, yeah, stay away from it. <laughs> but still, if you don't want to listen to me and still order it, well, you can do that from the link in the description. So, this is it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy. And if you need help to find this product online, please see my links in the description. And finally, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel so you can find me back easily next time you're looking for a great review video. See ya!